let's take a look at electromagnetic induction part 1, the Hall effect and magnetic flux. So previously we've seen that electric charges create electric fields. We also saw that moving electric charges or currents can create magnetic fields. We also saw that magnetic poles create magnetic fields. And now we're going to start thinking about a fourth kind of phenomenon called electromagnetic induction. And electromagnetic induction is the idea that a changing or moving magnetic field creates electric fields and currents. Now, all of these things, all of these phenomena, are related in a topic called electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is a topic which combines all the ideas of electric fields, magnetic poles, electric charges, and magnetic fields together. And we're starting to get a fuller picture of that now. So, the Hall effect. The Hall effect is when you induce an EMF in a conductor when the conductor moves in a magnetic field. And let's take a look at an example of this. Consider a conducting rod which is moving in a magnetic field. And I'll draw a picture of this. So we have magnetic field coming out of the page. We have a rod like this, a conducting rod like this, moving toward the top of the page. Now, that conducting rod, it contains positive and negative charges. If the rod is moving toward the top of the page, then the positive and negative charges within that rod are also moving toward the top of the page. And if moving charges are traveling in a magnetic field, then they're going to feel a magnetic force. So we can use the right-hand rule here. The positive charges in the conducting rod would feel a force to the right, and the negative charges in that rod would feel a force to the left. So what ultimately happens is a negative charge will develop on one side of this rod as it moves through the magnetic field, and a positive charge will develop on the other side. So this sets up a potential difference across the rod, similar to the potential difference from a cell or a battery. This is called an induced EMF. And of course, we could change the direction of the magnetic field. We could have the rod moving in different directions. And in multiple ways, we could set up a situation where the negative charges would travel to one side of the rod and the positive charges would travel to the other side of the rod. And we would get an induced EMF in all kinds of different ways. The next topic we're going to look at is magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is a measure of the amount of magnetic field passing through an area. And the symbol we use to represent magnetic flux is a capital Phi. And we have an equation to represent Phi. Phi is equal to B A cosine theta. And the meaning of these things is B represents the magnetic field strength in that area. A is the area. And theta here is a little strange. It's the angle between the magnetic field and a vector perpendicular to the area. So that's a little odd. I'm going to try to draw a diagram of what I mean here. So imagine we have this area, and there's a magnetic field passing through this area. Theta, again, is the angle between the magnetic field and a vector perpendicular to the area. Okay. The unit of magnetic field, or excuse me, the unit of magnetic flux, is the Tesla meter squared. It's also called a Weber, WB. Now you might be asking, well that seems a little bit odd, why are we defining this magnetic flux thing, why is it important? I promise you we will see it in part two. But thinking a little bit more about magnetic flux, there's kind of three things that we can do to change the magnetic flux. We could change the amount of area. So if we had a greater area we were talking about, we would have a greater flux. We could also change the strength of the magnetic field. If we had a greater field strength, we would have a greater flux. And then another thing we could do is change the angle. If we either rotated the magnetic field or rotated the area itself, we would change the angle, and changing the angle would change the magnetic flux. I'm also going to define a new term called magnetic flux density. 
Magnetic flux density is a term that's used to refer to the magnetic field strength. In other words, this thing that we've been calling B, or been representing with the letter B, can be called either the magnetic field strength or the magnetic flux density. Those two terms mean the same thing. Now, when we talk about the magnetic flux, usually we're going to consider the magnetic flux through an area inside of a loop of wire, or maybe a circuit, which is really just a loop of wire anyway. So imagine we have this wire loop, and we have a magnetic field, and it's passing through like this. The flux measures how much field passes through the loop. Okay. Now, if the wire is made of multiple linked loops, kind of like this, then the flux will be greater. Um, there's more loops for the field to go through. The total flux in this case is called the magnetic flux linkage. And we can say that the magnetic flux linkage is equal to N times the flux through a single loop. And the magnetic flux linkage then is equal to N B A cosine theta, where N represents the number of loops. Now in part two, we will see much more about the meaning of magnetic flux and why it is important and how it relates to the rest of this unit. But for now, we're going to stop right there.